Hi, my name is Mark Nowakowski, and I'm an experimental condensed matter physicist working at UC Berkeley. I get a lot of questions from people asking me what I do as an experimental physicist. Well, in this video, I hope to summarize the process that I go through to measure and interpret meaningful scientific data. Condensed matter physics is a broad branch of physics that studies the diverse properties of different phases of matter, like liquids and solids. I specifically study magnetic materials, like iron or nickel, and think about ways they can be used for future technologies. Magnetic materials are already used in computer hard drives to store information. If you look at this hard drive with a powerful microscope, you would be able to see the small magnets which actually store all of your important information. The direction these small magnets point stores your information in a language that the computer can understand, binary code. If you want to change the information of a file, a small device called a read-write head generates a magnetic field near the magnets to change their direction. However, the read-write head requires a lot of electrical current to generate this magnetic field. This wastes a lot of energy. I'm researching alternative methods to control these small magnets without wasting energy. One way to control a magnet's direction without electrical current is to bend it. This phenomenon is known as magnetostriction. We plan to study this effect in our magnets by making magnetic samples, then bending them while observing their magnetic properties. Before we study how bending affects very small magnets though, first we want to understand how bending affects big magnets that you can see with your eyes. With the help of undergraduate researchers Tony Besserol and Brian Zutter, we will explain to you how we plan, set up, and perform our experiment. Before we can bend a magnet and investigate its properties, we first have to make a magnetic sample that will fit into our setup. We cut out pieces of silicon that will fit into our bending setup and put it in this chamber. In this chamber is a puck of magnetic material. We want to deposit this magnetic material onto our sample. To do this, we energize argon atoms to hit this target. This knocks off magnetic material in a controlled manner. The magnetic material then builds up on our silicon sample like snow builds up in the winter. This process is called sputtering. You can even look into the chamber during this process and even see the magnetic material coming off the target and onto our sample. Once we have confirmed the sample's composition, we can then put it into our bending apparatus and study its magnetic properties. Brian will now describe how to measure those magnetic properties. To measure the magnetic properties of our material, we're going to use an optical characterization method called MOC or the magneto-optical Kerr effect. Now when I say optical, I mean we're going to be using visible light to measure the magnetic properties of our sample. More specifically, we're going to be reflecting a red laser light off of our sample. First, we glue a device onto our sample that measures how much we bend our samples. Then we place the sample into our bending setup and push the sample between two magnetic poles which we will use to sweep a magnetic field in different directions across our sample. We plan and construct a pathway that prepares the laser light to be sensitive to changes in the magnetic properties. When the laser hits the sample, it interacts with the material. The brightness of the reflected laser depends on which direction the magnet is pointing. By monitoring the laser brightness at the detector, we can experimentally distinguish the two magnet directions and determine the magnetic field required to switch the magnet. Here is the setup that we constructed to measure this effect. Our laser starts here and we shine it through a lens to focus the light onto our sample into crystal. The crystal is known as a polarizer and it initializes a special property of our light. After the light reflects off the sample, it is sent through another crystal which filters out the magnetic signal. The laser beam is then focused onto a photodiode so we can detect the signal electrically. Without bending the sample, we measure data that looks like this, where the x-axis describes the magnetic field that we apply and the y-axis indicates the direction the magnet is pointing. This graph tells us how easily we can flip the magnet between its two states. This data is a control experiment which tells us how our sample behaves before bending. Next, we bend our sample without breaking it and remeasure the laser signal. When we compare our data to the control experiment, we see a difference. By bending the magnet, we are making it easier for it to remain pointed along one direction. Even though this doesn't switch the magnet, it still experimentally confirms that bending the magnet changes its magnetic properties. 
Once a phenomenon like magnetostriction has been experimentally confirmed, it can be robustly explored and developed in future experiments. Now that we know that we can use magnetostriction to control big magnets, in our next experiment we want to use magnetostriction to control magnets that are 100 times smaller than the diameter of your hair. Using this research process, we hope to create new pathways towards energy efficient computing. Now hopefully you know a little bit more about what scientists do and how we do our work. Finally, the most important responsibility of a scientist is to clearly communicate their findings to their colleagues and perhaps more importantly to the general public. We hope you have found this video informative and on behalf of the students and myself, thanks for listening.